I call on Emma Roddick to speak to and move the motion up to eight minutes, Minister. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Scottish Government condemns the UK Government's abhorrent illegal migration bill, as does this Parliament, which voted overwhelmingly to reject the bill on the 25th of April. The Joint Committee on Human Rights at Westminster has stated that the bill is currently incompatible with the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, the Council of Europe Convention on Action Against Trafficking and the European Convention on Human Rights. The Scottish Government has written to the UK Government on multiple occasions requesting that it withdraw the bill. And we will continue to write to them, including at the second meeting of the Interministerial Group on Safety, Security and Migration, which the Cabinet Secretary for Social Justice and the UK Home Secretary will attend in July. Presiding Officer, the Scottish Government's view is that this bill overreaches into devolved competencies by altering the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Scotland Act 2015 passed unanimously by this Parliament. Clauses 23 and 27 of the bill are a restriction on the power of Scottish Ministers under the 2015 Act, altering the executive competence of Ministers and impacting our powers to support and assist those excluded as a result of this UK legislation. The Scottish Government therefore prepared a legislative consent memorandum as we firmly believe the Illegal Migration Bill is a relevant bill under Rule 9b of the Standing Orders. The presiding officer has, of course, concluded that the bill does not meet the criteria in Rule 9b and the Scottish Government has not, therefore, been permitted to lodge that LCM. The presiding officer is, of course, entitled to reach the conclusion that she did, but I am disappointed by the decision and this disappointment has been amplified given the Senate just voted last week refusing consent for what they called a callous bill that would allow children to be removed from the care of Welsh social services. The Scottish Government's view is that the consent of this Parliament should be required for clauses 23 and 27 of the UK Bill. I will outline to Parliament the reasons for this. Clause 23 of the Bill disapplies specific provisions within the Human Trafficking Act in relation to support and assistance for potential victims in Scotland. Clause 27 of the Bill directly amends sections 9 and 10 of the 2015 Act to make clear they are subject to Clause 23. The provisions are disapplied in respect of persons to whom the Secretary of State is under the duty to make removal arrangements in Clause 2.1 of the UK Bill and who are in receipt of a positive reasonable grounds decision that the adult is a victim of an offence or of human trafficking or a competent authority is in the process of determining if there are reasonable grounds. The 2015 Act requires Scottish ministers to secure such support and assistance as they consider necessary for an adult where there are reasonable grounds to believe that the adult is a victim of an offence of human trafficking. The duty exists during what is described as the relevant period, which begins on the date it is determined that there are reasonable grounds to believe that the adult is a victim of human trafficking and ends on the earlier of the end of the period specified in regulations, currently up to 90 days, or the date on which there is a conclusive determination that the adult is or is not the victim of an offence of human trafficking. The 2015 Act also enables the Scottish Ministers, via a discretionary power, to secure support and assistance for an adult trafficking victim in certain circumstances. Scottish Government crisis support for potential victims of human trafficking is currently delivered through grant funding arrangements of over £7.45 million from the Victim-Centred Approach Fund between 2022 and 2025. These funds are shared between the Trafficking Awareness Raising Alliance, which supports women who have been trafficked for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation, and Migrant Help, which supports all other adult victims. Support can include accommodation, assistance with day-to-day -day living, medical advice and treatment including psychological help, language translation and interpretation, counselling, legal advice, help accessing other services, and, if the victim wishes, repatriation. The UK Government's Illegal Migration Bill will prevent delivery of this support to people within scope other than in a very narrow selection of cases where there are compelling reasons for an individual to remain in the UK to provide cooperation with a public authority in connection with an investigation or criminal proceedings related to their exploitation. Indeed, the UK Bill has been amended to ensure the Secretary of State must assume that it is not necessary for a person to be in the United Kingdom to provide this cooperation. I hope that all of us in the Chamber today will recognise victims of trafficking as some of the most vulnerable people in society, having suffered unimaginable trauma through the experiences of exploitation. They should be afforded the correct support and protection 
not vilified for seeking safety. Last Thursday, alongside the Cabinet Secretary for Social Justice, I hosted a summit with stakeholders across Scotland and beyond to assess the bill and discuss reasonable mitigations. Certainly, yeah. Maggie Chapman. I thank the Minister for taking an intervention. At the summit last Thursday, we heard very, very clearly from the third sector and other stakeholders their concerns, particularly around the non-derogable obligations that they and we have under international human rights uh, laws, including the European Convention on Action Against Trafficking. Can the Minister provide a uh, some comfort to those people that actually we believe that they should continue to fulfil um, their non-derogable obligations under international human rights laws, even if this bill is passed. Minister. Presiding officer, nobody should be in any doubt that the Scottish Government is committed to continuing to do anything we can to make sure we are meeting our international human rights obligations. And we encourage any public authority to, to do the same within the bounds of the law. Um, but fundamentally, we do just simply think the Westminster Parliament should remove its amendments to our trafficking legislation. On the summit, um, which Maggie Chapman, of course, also attended, um, we are currently considering many of the views that were put forward by stakeholders, and I will share key thoughts with relevant committees of the Scottish Parliament. The summit heard, for example, from the former independent anti-slavery commissioner and perhaps the most striking contribution was provided through a video created by the Trafficking Awareness Raising Alliance. The video was voiced by a female survivor of human trafficking for the purposes of commercial sexual exploitation and appealed to lawmakers to reconsider this horrific bill. This powerful statement starkly highlighted how vulnerable people will be consigned to a fate of exploitation with no support entitlements or protections thanks to this bill. Presiding officer, the UK government's bill does not introduce any legal visa routes for people to claim asylum. There are no visa routes to enable people to claim asylum in the UK, which is why it will not stop the boats. What it will do is stop women across the UK who are victims of commercial sexual exploitation who are being raped multiple times daily from seeking help and protection from authorities. It will negatively impact prosecutions as victims will be fearful of engaging in the criminal justice process and attempts to eliminate human trafficking in Scotland if victims actively avoid identification for fear of being removed from the UK. It is a shocking indictment on the UK government's values and demonstrates the real impact of this legislation. As this chamber has heard before, the bill also contains powers which seriously and significantly impinge on the rights and safety of unaccompanied asylum-seeking children. Make no mistake that this bill will force children into harm's way. Presiding officer, the Scottish Government, this Parliament and many in wider civic society are united in our stance that this bill has no place in Scotland. Thank you. I now call on Donald Cameron. Up to six minutes, please. Um, Presiding officer, thank you. And can I begin with a couple of important points, procedural points, about how we have got here? I make no apology for, for making these points, because this was meant to be a debate about legislative consent. Um, but yesterday, the Scottish Government's motion revealed that this is not indeed an LCM debate, as we're used to having. Uh, but they have not been permitted uh, to lodge a legislative consent memorandum and the Minister's motion says as much. But let us be absolutely clear uh, who uh, has refused that permission because it's not the UK Government, um, because lodging a memorandum is of course nothing to do with them, but the Scottish Parliament. And uh, here I address you directly, Presiding Officer. I, I will. Minister. Just, just to point out that at no point did I, did I blame the UK government around the, the LCM, but it's certainly the UK government's fault that this bill includes clauses which alter our executive competence, which amend the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Act, which the Scottish Conservatives backed in 2015. Yep. So could the member perhaps explain why the change? Donald Cameron. Um, I, I will, but I, I will make the point that I was in the process of making that this doesn't affect devolved competence. The presiding officer, presumably having taken legal advice, has decided this is not a relevant bill for the purpose of an LCM. The presiding officer is a guardian 
of the processes of this Parliament. The legislative consent pro uh, process of this Parliament does not apply, so legislative consent is not required. In shorthand, the view of the Parliament is that this does not engage devolved competence. Migration is quintessentially a reserved matter. And it's also a view that I too have expanded in the Chamber when speaking uh, against a business motion and when speaking in the debate we had in this Chamber a few months ago. And during that debate, there was no indication of the government's views on legislative consent because no memorandum had been published. We had no formal documentation regarding the views of competence on the bill. I made the point that we did not know whether the government thought the devolved competence was engaged, whether it believed that legislative consent was necessary. If it believed that consent was necessary, we, we did not know why or in what way. And I um, asked, uh, note the Cabinet Secretary, who I see sitting beside the Minister, uh, who said that she, um, she confirmed to Parliament that they will shortly uh, lodge a legislative consent memorandum on the bill. And I will write to the UK Government today, I, I won't actually, I will write to the UK Government today to inform it of our intention to do so. Now, it would appear that the Cabinet Secretary was ill-advised to make such a pledge because it turns out that the only people who think that devolved competence is engaged is the Scottish Government, not the UK Government and not, uh, I won't actually, not the officials in this, in this very Parliament who are of the same view. So the question again is why we are here today. And the fact is, this is simply another attempt after a full debate on this bill on the 25th of April, where the substantive issues were exhaustively canvassed to have another attack on UK government migration policy. So far, so predictable. Now, as I said in that first debate, it would of course be better if the government was using this time to instead debate the real issues facing Scots issues that this Parliament actually does have competence over. NHS waiting lists, drug deaths, the widening attainment gap in schools, numerous transport failures, including the mismanagement of the delivery of new ferries to Scotland. Yes. Cabinet Secretary. I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, can the member um, suggest when he may wish to get on to discussing um, the very women which the minister discussed in her opening statement who are impacted by this bill, who were protected by devolved legislation that the members' party voted for and are frightened about what's... And that is our responsibility as a government and a parliament to protect the most vulnerable in our society. It's a shame he doesn't think so. Donald Cameron. Well, I look forward to uh, the summing up of this debate because, frankly, that is no answer to the question this bill is not within the legislative competence of this Parliament. Now, I will turn to the issues that were raised. The UK Government has introduced this bill to make sure the only route to asylum is in the UK is a safe and legal one. Since 2015, I point out, the UK has offered sanctuary to over 580,000 men, women and children through safe routes like refugee family reunion and the UK resettlement scheme, as well as welcoming people through the country-specific routes for Ukraine, Hong Kong, Afghanistan. Not, I've taken two interventions so far, I'm not taking another. Ukraine, Hong Kong, Afghanistan and Syria. The UK government has made it clear again and again that the bill is focused on illegal migration. It seeks to address the growing instances of people smuggling and to reduce unsafe migrant crossing. The number of people arriving illegally in 2022 was more than 45,000, a 60% increase on 2021. And by restricting illegal migration, there will then be greater capacity to provide a safe haven for those at risk of war and persecution. And the bill provides for the government, the UK government, to commit to resettling a specific number of the most vulnerable refugees from around the world every year. The UK government has been responsive to concerns raised during the bill's progress in the House of Parliament. It's made a number of amendments at report stage, including enhancing the safeguards for unaccompanied children by setting out the limited circumstances in which removal of children will be exercised, such as the purposes of family reunion or removal to a safe country of origin. Amendments were also made to the bill's detention powers for unaccompanied children, which will now only permit, be permitted for purposes prescribed in regulations made by the Secretary of State. And for those reasons, we will be voting against the Scottish Government's motion at decision time. Thank you. And I now call on Paul O'Kane. Up to five minutes, please.
Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer, and I rise in support of the Government's motion in opposition to the UK's Illegal Migration Bill. Um, my party have been steadfast in our opposition to this bill, voting against it in the House of Commons, and in April when we debated the bill in this Parliament, uh, articulating clearly our opposition to it. Let us uh, make no mistake, the Illegal Migration Bill is brutal, pernicious and totally ill-considered. It challenges the fundamental human right to seek asylum, which is enshrined in the 1951 United Nations Refugee Convention. In conducting their legislative scrutiny of the bill, the Joint Committee on Human Rights, as we have heard already, comprised of a cross-party uh, politicians from the House of Commons and the House of Lords, concluded that the bill breaches the UK's international human rights obligations, including the European Court of Human Rights. Indeed, even the Home Secretary herself has acknowledged that there is a more than 50 per cent chance that this legislation will break international human rights law. And even today, we have seen that the government does not even know how much their absurd and cruel plans will cost. It is clear that the legislation will, despite repeated warnings, remove the safeguards for victims of modern slavery and human trafficking, exposing people to a greater threat of harm or, as is too often the case, death. The Modern Slavery Act gave hope to victims. This bill, the Illegal Migration Bill, removes that hope. I genuinely believe that if enacted, as is currently proposed, the bill will leave more people, more men, more women and children in slavery in the UK. Those are not my words, Presiding Officer. They are the words of former Conservative Prime Minister Theresa May. And that is em emblematic, I think, of how far and how quickly the Conservative Party have lurched to the right on these issues. And I would urge the Conservative members in this chamber, because I believe um, the front, be front bench spokesperson to be a man of integrity uh, and a good man, to use his voice and to use their voices to oppose this immoral piece of legislation, even at this late stage as it um, concludes its parliamentary process at, at Westminster. How can they justify supporting a bill so lacking in such basic compassion, empathy and humanity? Of course, presiding officer, as we have heard already, this debate is focused on the impact of the legislation in a devolved context, so I will turn to that uh, in my remaining time. The Government motion highlights that this bill will have a profound impact on devolved le legislation, amending the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Act uh, 2015, which was agreed across this Parliament. I accept that the Scottish Government cannot rewrite uh, that legislation or indeed opt out of the worst clauses of um, the, the UK legislation. However, I do believe that we now have a responsibility to those who will be most impacted by the legislation to do everything in our power to find solutions um, to mitigate the worst aspects of the legislation. So I would strongly urge the Government and offer to work with the Government uh, in that uh, vein to explore every avenue to ensure uh, we are maximising our legislative competency to provide support for trafficking survivors and unaccompanied children. I think there are ways that this could be done, uh, a greater focus on exploring how we enhance monitoring, inspection, regulation of accommodation that is used in the asylum system to ensure that um, provision is of good standard. Uh, and I think that we can work with various partners um, who have been supplying important information and briefing uh, throughout this process to, as not least, um, the Scottish Refugee Council. The legislation will also result, presiding officer, in more people being destitute in Scotland. So I think it's imperative that government explores how it can provide additional resources to local authorities to ensure we have necessary resilience to cope with increased demand for support services. In considering the various policy initiatives which could be explored further to mitigate the aspects of the bill, um, we are calling on the Scottish Government to uh, publish a comprehensive Scotland-wide mitigation plan by the autumn. Uh, and as I've said already, we will work with the government in that regard. Uh, and that plan should outline how Scotland will continue to remain compliant with international human rights law, including the European Court of Human Rights and the Council of Europe's Convention uh, on Action Against Trafficking. Presiding officer, in drawing my remarks to a close, we all have a responsibility as legislators, as elected representatives and as human beings to do everything we can within our powers to defend, protect and enhance the rights of the most marginalised people in our society, in our country, who come to our country and in our world. I am clear that this bill is cruel, it is inhumane, it is unjustifiable as a piece of legislation and the reality is it is not going to work in terms of what it seeks to do. It cannot be used as a cover uh, or an excuse um, for the, government's, uh, the UK government's uh, bigger agenda. So I do urge the Scottish Government to work with partners to ensure that we mitigate, that we do all we can, 
Um, but for now, presiding officer, allow me to add my support um, to the voices which are calling this bill out for what it is and opposing it clearly here in Scotland. Thank you. Thank you. And I now call on Alex Cole Hamilton. Up to five minutes, please. Thank you very much indeed, uh, presiding officer. I, I deeply regret the circumstances that brought us together this afternoon. And before I start, presiding officer, it is regrettable that Donald Cameron was not able to take my intervention. I have known and liked Donald for seven years. I know his values, and I struggle to see how this bill is compatible with those values, or indeed values of most of his party in this chamber. He's ha I'm happy for him to intervene on me to tell me why. But when we discussed this only two months ago, I had very much hoped that sense would have prevailed and this appalling excuse for a piece of legislation would have been prevented from making it to our statute books. Yet today we stand on the precipice of that happening as the Conservatives are making our country a far less kind and a darker place. Therefore, I ardently agree with my colleagues from across the chamber that this bill will do far more harm than good. There are so many reasons why it should not be passed into law. Presiding officer, I very much echo the sentiment of the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, who put it best, I think, when he said, and I quote, that this bill has too many problems for just one speech. The biggest and overarching problem, however, with this bill is that it will do nothing except hurt the most vulnerable who are seeking safe harbour in our shores, those who have fled the most unimaginable atrocities, those who are in desperate need and utterly deserving of our compassion and our protection. Presiding officer, this country has a proud history of offering sanctuary to those escaping such horror. And it is because of refugees and migrants that our society is far stronger, our tapestry far richer and more vibrant. Yet the Conservative Party seem intent on trashing all of that and that legacy. Just some of the effects of this bill include giving the government the power to detain adults and children indefinitely. It is a bill which restricts victims of modern slavery from accessing life-saving support. It is a bill which, make, which makes it impossible for torn apart families to reunite easily, leaving children and young people alone and exposed. The United Nations have stated that if passed, this bill would breach the 1951 Refugee Convention and therefore more likely be in contravention with international law. There are basic standards of governance, presiding officer, in our society that must adhere, be adhered to. Presiding officer, surely breaking international law falls well beneath those standards. Although as we're increasingly learning from recent events, it appears our current Conservative government does not appear to know much about those standards. Furthermore, not only does this bill pose a huge risk to some of the most vulnerable in our society, uh, people in our planet, the Liberal Democrats also remain very concerned about the risk that this bill poses to our democracy. It takes power away from the courts. It strips them of their ability to review and intervene if a detention period or removal is unlawful. Instead, it places such decisions unfettered into the hands of ministers, potentially weakening our judiciary, upsetting that check and balance. <laughs> Presiding officer, this bill panders to the ugliest form of our politics. It is a classic populist move, straight from the playbook of the likes of Donald uh, Trump. Even an empty three-word slogan delivered in staccato terms, designed to incite anger and defensiveness, stop the boats, whilst offering very little to actually solve the problem. Signing officer, I was feeling especially cynic if I was feeling especially cynical, I would muse that this was a very deliberate tactic to distract from the fact that this Conservative government is unfit and incapable of running this country and looking to punch down once again on the vulnerable and the dispossessed, a fact that the British people are becoming increasingly aware of. It is therefore saddening that there are those in this chamber that support such cheap politics. When we last debated this issue in this parliament, every single Conservative MSP in this chamber voted against the condemnation of this bill. Once again, showing that Douglas Ross and Rishi Sunak are one and the same, content with exploiting refugees, fleeing death and victims of human trafficking to pander the, to the furthest extremes of their base. The Liberal Democrats have always believed that we have a moral duty to offer help to those who need it, which is why we condemn this bill in the strongest possible terms. 
It is also why we are calling for an expansion and proper funding of refu the refugee resettlement scheme, as well as the establishment of a new dedicated unit for asylum that can establish safe routes to this country, so that decisions are made with compassion and fairness, not ignorance and malice. To conclude, presiding officer, we must ensure that we honour the UK's long tradition of offering home and harbour to those who need it most. Thank you. Thank you. And I call on Emma Roddick to wind up. Up to five minutes, Minister. Thank you, presiding officer. We heard uh, Donald Cameron talk about the real issues, the issues that we have responsibility for. Let me explain for a moment what I think about that. We have a responsibility to victims of human trafficking. We have a responsibility to unaccompanied children in this country. And as Paul O'Kane said, we have a responsibility to protect and enhance human rights for all. It would be lovely if we lived in a world where we could rely on safe and legal routes into the UK. We cannot, in large part due to the UK government, but also because of the human trafficking trade. We are talking here about people who have undergone horrific treatment and unimaginable trauma who often have no idea how they got here or where they are, let alone have any influence over what method of transport they use. It is insincere and cruel to approach this debate with an assumption that everyone has control over their entry here. And what this legislation will do is prevent people with legitimate claims to asylum from accessing it for the very same reasons that they need it. It will send a message to those under the control of human traffickers that it is not safe for them to speak up and ask for help. Now, we are committed in Scotland to upholding human rights and enshrining them as far as possible within Scots law. And it's been incredibly frustrating, to say the least, that our voice on this bill has been ignored. And it is no surprise that the UK government is rushing this legislation through to avoid scrutiny because it does not stand up to scrutiny. We are extremely worried by what this bill will mean for vulnerable asylum-seeking children who flee to the UK for a place of safety. And we agree with the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child that the UK government must repeal all draft provisions that would violate children's rights. Unlike the UK government, the Scottish government is committed to giving children's rights the highest possible protection in Scotland. And we are clear that unaccompanied child asylum seekers should benefit from the same rights, protections and safety afforded to any other child in Scotland. There are some issues which are so important and fundamental to our humanity that people expect and they deserve cross-party agreement on dealing with them. Human rights should be one of those issues. Scotland's human rights-based approach to supporting victims of human trafficking should be one of those victims. So, sorry, one of those issues. The Scottish Conservatives agreed with me on that when they voted along with the rest of the Parliament unanimously for the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Act. They agreed that this was bigger than party politics back then. And I hope today at least some of their members will consider standing for what they know is right here and backing our position that the Illegal Migration Bill should not amend the Act or limit our ability to help victims as laid out in the Act that they supported. I will end, presiding officer, by saying I've been grateful for the engagement of stakeholders to date on this bill and its impacts. And it's a sad and difficult truth that under current constitutional arrangements, we don't have the power to stop, amend or fully mitigate the very dangerous impacts of this bill. But we remain committed to doing what we can with the powers that we have. And I will continue to work with those who have an interest to seek out any mitigations that we can implement to make sure Scotland, if not the UK, is a place of safety and support for those who need it the most. In the meantime, I hope that colleagues across the Chamber will join the Scottish Government and key human rights organisations in Scotland in supporting our motion today and telling the UK Government that its bill and its hostile environment have no place here. Thank you. That concludes the debate on illegal migration UK. Illegal Migration Bill, UK legislation. It is now time to move on to the next item of business and we'll do so in a moment.